Hello everyone, welcome back to the new class. Today we are going to discuss in the marketing chapter of business studies. We have discussed about four P's in marketing needs. Here we are going to discuss one of the most important element of marketing needs that is promotion. One of the most important P that is promotion as a tool in marketing. Here in this chapter, class we will be discussing about promotion and various promotion needs or various elements in promotion needs. Let us see that what is promotion. What is promotion? Promotion is one of the most important element of marketing. That's what we have to. We can say promotion is a form of communication. It is communicating about the product. Communicating about the product to the customers with the two main objects. One is informing about the product. Informing the customers or consumers that we have this particular product that can help to satisfy your needs. So and so needs can be satisfied. That is one object. And another one is persuading them to buy the product. Okay. So whatever we are hearing about a product can together be called as promotion. You may be hearing, hearing about various advertising. You may be witnessing various advertising about the products. Some salesman may be telling something about a particular product to you. You will be getting various what benefits that motivate you to purchase a product like advertising, sorry, like a, uh, discount, rebate, some contacts, all those things. So all these things are the way of communication about a particular product and it helps you to purchase that product. So that is what is called promotion. So we can say that promotion is communicating about a product to the customers with thin objectives or with the two objectives of informing about the product and inducing the people to buy the product. That is what is called the promotion. So it's a communication about a product to the customers with the two objectives. One is informing them about a product, informing the customers about a product. That means there is a product that will help, uh, that will, is suitable for satisfying your particular needs. And motivate them to purchase that product. That these are the two important things in that community. Or two important objectives of promotion. So promotion also involves various tools. Various tools used for promotion of a product is called a promotion mix and there are various elements in promotion mix. Let us see those elements in promotion mix. Elements of promotion mix. Promotion mix means various tools used for promoting the product. That includes mainly there are three elements. There are three elements in promotion mix. One is advertising, another one is personal selling and the third one is sales promotion. So here three elements are there or three tools are there in the promotion mix. They are advertising, personal selling and sales promotion. Advertising, personal selling and sales promotion. And now let us see what is advertising? You have got, you have seen various advertisements about a product. Then what is an advertising? There is a saying that uh, people say that an average man witness around 5,000 advertisements in a year. In a day. Not in a year, in a day. 5,000 advertisement will be witnessed. A person will witness five, around 5,000 advertisements in a day. 
so that is the that much it is powerful and very common then what is an advertisement how you can explain about advertisement advertisement is a non personal presentation okay advertisement is a non personal presentation of information through an identified spots for that we will make some payments so we can define advertisement in this way that advertisement is a paid form of impersonal presentation through an identified spots okay advertisement is a paid form of communication paid form of communication about a product or service so advertisement is a paid form of communication we pay and uh, that means for giving the advertisement we spend some money impersonal or non personal presentation means we are not directly presenting so impersonal presentation that means we are not directly if i have to sell them some product i am not directly telling to the public that this is the product this will help you to uh, your so and so needs and this is very good and useful for your needs like that we are kind of telling directly to public instead of that a uh, inversion not directly okay how you are telling through an identifier so for a giving the advertisement we will approach an advertisement agency or some forms or people who are expert in making the advertisements and through them we give the advertisement so we can say that advertisement is paid form then impersonal or non personal presentation and through an identified response identified sponsor okay so these are the three things in advertisement advertisement is a form of communication which is paid a form of impersonal and through an identified sponsor that is the speciality of advertisement then let us see what are the merits of advertising merits of advertising merits of advertising what are the merits of advertising we can say that advertising is very much it's a, a mass reach way of information about a product so it has its own merits or advantages so we can say that the most important merit is its mass reach mass reach advertising has mass reach that means what it is mass reach that means within limited time or within a single advertisement it can reach a large number of viewers okay that means it will be received by a like large number of people suppose you can see that uh, in tv channel you are witnessing various advertisements so at the same time it will be viewed by a large community so it has wide reach or, or mass reach that is one of the speciality another one is that it enhances enhancing customer satisfaction it enhances the customer satisfaction how because we are seeing directly that product its image will be seen or the product will be what presented in the advertisement and that will be presented with some gra computer graphics or some visual effects and that will be presented sometimes by your favorite actor or actress so that thing is needed for us to get satisfied isn't it so it enhances customer satisfaction that means whatever uh, the 
famous people or the your favorite heroes or heroines say is about the product will be accepted because there if they say something about that particular product it may not be a fault or it may not be fake so that will be that creates a high degree of satisfaction among the customers then another one is expressiveness another quality of advertisement is its expressiveness that is what we have told with the help of some computer graphics or design works the product will be expressed in an attractive way so it so at attractive presentation of the product or service is another important effectiveness or merit of advertising and next we can say that it is a con it's economically beneficial for the business by because by spending a lump sum amount it will reach to large number of people for example if salesman says something in something about a product to the customer salesman may be telling that information to particular one or two customers at a time isn't it here we are giving the advertisement to a large number of people that means a single advertisement at a time will be viewed by many people so it is economical in nature okay so these are the merits of advertising let us see what are the demerits demerits of advertising or limitations of advertising the most important limitation is less possible less possible what is it less possible see we are showing the advertisement and of course it is viewed by many people at a time but after immediately after seeing the advertisement these people will not be rushed to and shocked by the product that much it is not possible isn't it we will be viewing that advertisement and after that after sometimes we may forget it so it is less forceful or it is unable to force effectively the customers to buy the that is one of the demerits isn't it so what what will be the effect then whenever we are thinking about purchasing a product that time we may remember that yes we have seen that particular advertisement so that product may be good then let us purchase that product otherwise it will not force anyone to buy the product immediately so it is less forceful in nature another one is that lack of feedback lack of feedback how far it is satisfied how far a customer is satisfied by the advertisement how far he likes the product what are his views about, about about that particular product what are his objections his doubts everything will not be communicated to the market that means he will not communicate anything about the advertisement to the market so there is no feedback on the other hand if a salesman sells tells something directly about a product to the customer there itself we will get the feedback that is absent in the case of advertisement there is no feedback we will hear the advertisement or we will see the advertisement and forget the result or after seeing the advertisement if there arises any doubt or anything about that about that product or any comment about that product that we will uh, keep with us and after some time we will leave that we will not inform directly to the market is it not customer after seeing the advertisement directly call the customer care of that particular product and says that oh here what if this is the pro problem with your uh, product why you are not rectifying that like that no feedback will be given okay then next we can say that inflexibility inflexibility 
Why it is inflexible in nature? No advertisement can be given to given according to the needs of the customers. Isn't it? Suppose uh, I am a layman and watching the television. In front of me, what will be the use of giving advertisements about a luxurious car? I may not be interested in that. So, customized information cannot be given. So, it is not flexible. That means, advertising cannot be given according to the needs and preference. Needs, preference or taste of the customer. On the other hand, if salesman says something about the product, he can understand the needs and interest of the customer and accordingly he can modify the advertisement. That is not possible. Or accordingly he can modify the information. But that is not possible in the case of advertisement. Isn't it? So it is inflexible in nature. Then another one is this low effectiveness. Low effectiveness. It is not that effective. It is not that much effective. So that's what I was telling here that you will be watching advertisement in a TV channel. So you will be watching a program in between the advertisement comes. That may be the time you will be searching about the programs in other channels. Isn't it? When the advertisement comes, you may switch over to next channel to search that which are the programs in those channels. So that is the another problem here. It is low effective. Effectiveness may not be there. Okay. So these are the demerits of advertising. Then there are certain objections. What are the objections of advertising? Advertising suffers some objections. Let us see each other. One is it adds to cost. It adds to cost. Advertising adds to cost. What it means? See, in the market or the seller is giving an advertisement about a product. And that advertisement will be costly. A, a minute of advertisement in a television channel has to be paid for that and the marketer has to pay lakhs of rupees according to the viewership of the channel. So that much it is costly. This one or two lakhs rupees which are paid for the advertisements for one time will be added to the cost of the product because this is also the cost. It also includes the total cost of the total cost of producing and marketing the products. So it adds to the cost. Which will be collected from whom? From the customers in the product, in the form of selling price. Because cost plus profit is equal to sales. So that, that much the amount will be, the amount of advertisement will be added to the cost and that also we have to pay. That is one of the objections. And actually, this we have told that this amount is spent for large number of people. So at the same time, large number of people will be viewing that. Like that, we can say that because of the viewership, the demand of the product may increase. Demand of the product may increase. Since the demand increases, demand increases, there will be more sales. So they may be able to sell the product at lower price because uh, since there is more demand, there are like some uh, but justifiable amount of profit. In that way, they can sell the product at the less price also because demand increases. Okay. So anyway, there is an objection that it adds to cost. Another objection is that it undermines social values. Undermines social values. That is another objection. That means it undermines or 
gives some information which are not desirable for the society. Sometimes it will not honor or uh, honor the that religious or social values. For example, you may be uh, you may have heard, seen various advertisements which says about the attraction of people towards the product. For example, that people people are people are moving behind the person who is using a particular toothpaste because of the smell of the smell coming from his mouth. People are what moving behind him, or a person who is riding a bike will be attracted by uh, one lady and he will be running behind. She will be running behind that person. So such a type of advertisement is against the values of the society. So it undermines social values. Then here also it says that it undermines social values, but there are also certain exceptions. Here they are presenting the product in an interesting way. So in which way we taste that product or which way we taste that advertisement, uh, that depends upon our mental structure or our viewpoints. And says that it is not the fault of the marketer. He says about his product and he gives that much importance about his product. It is our views that we, how we are taking about that product. Okay. Then says that another important objection is that confuses the buyer. Confuses the buyer. After seeing the advertisement of many of the products, many of the homogeneous products, all products are superior. People feel that all the customers are feel that oh that product is superior. Then after that, when we see the similar product of another company, then we will think that yes, this is better than that. So the finally, consumer will be confused that which product can be demanded or that is which is the best product. So all marketers or all advertisements say that the products are good. No advertisement is saying that this product is inferior. On the other hand, advertisement sometimes indirectly says that that particular the product produced by other company is inferior. Sometimes we may have heard that that toothpaste has no salt. But our product, our toothpaste has salt also. Isn't it? So like that. It confuses that the buyer's mind confuses that which product need to be bought because this product has this much features and that product does not have, but that product has some other features but this product does not have. So, like that, it confuses the buyers. There also, this objection can be covered by saying that every marketer or every seller believes that his product is better than. The other product that's what he says that says and uh, tells about the customers. So this is the thing which we have to decide. As a wise customer, we have to uh, search out and find out that which is better for our needs that varies according to the interest of the people. Okay. Then another important then, objection that may arise is that it encourages the sale of inferior goods. Encourages the sale of inferior goods. So, along with the superior or standard goods, some inferior goods also will be marketed because of the advertisement, attractiveness of advertisement. That's what we have told that. Even an inferior goods also will be marketed if your favorite hero or actor or actress comes in the advertisement and says that this is the better product, this is what I am using. Okay. Because of the use of this product, I have got this much fire or this much uh, that changes. Like that, if your favorite hero or heroine comes and introduce a product, even the inferior goods also can be. So that is another objection. So 
the objection can be overcome by say, saying that what valuable point is there that an inferior product can be marketed or can be sold to a customer once in a time. Suppose you have purchased, you have got uh, cheated and purchased that product once. After using that you pay, you know that that product is not good. Suppose it is a consumer product, it is not good. You will not use. And you will say the same thing to your friends and relatives and they also will not purchase that product. Isn't it? So, in that way, the demand of the product may decrease. So, since the company knows about that product, since the company not knows about that this is the problem, the customers may feel that it is inferior. Then will they be uh, ready to give the advertisement for that product? No. That's what inferior goods may not give that much advertisement because they themselves know that it is not qualitative. Once or twice only will be purchased and afterwards customers will not be ready to buy the product. And so thereby the money spent for this advertisement may be a huge burden for us. Okay, so inferior goods may not give that much advertisement. Then another important saying objection is that some advertisements are bad in place. Some advertisements are bad in place. Some advertisements are bad in place. That's what some advertisement. The picturization of some advertisements are not desirable to the values of the society. See, it's an, uh, for example, a lady is dancing in the public after seeing a particular uh, person who is wearing a particular brand of shirt. So like that some advertisement that gives, we cannot justify that. So such a type of advertisements are there which gives a bad taste about a product or market. So this type of advertisement also is giving for an entertainment purpose. So we can decide that anyway we purchase that product or if we see that product we may not do that things. So it is given for an entertainment sake. So we, anyway these are the various objections that is commonly seen about an advertisement. Okay. Now let us discuss another element of promotion tool or another, another amount of promotion mix that is personal selling. Personal selling. What is personal selling? It's a direct face to face communication between the seller and the buyer about the particular product. That means it is a direct communication between the seller and the buyer or prospective buyer of a product. That means when you go to a show or when the seller approaches you for the sale of or buy or purchase of the goods, he communicates you about the various features of the product, use of the product, contents of the product, purpose of the product, everything. All those things can be called as persons. So that is the direct uh, transaction or direct in communication between you and your self. Okay. That means salesman, a particular person will be the salesman, he informs about the product to the customers. Then what are the merits of personal selling? Merits of personal selling. That are the merits. One is that most important merit is its flexibility. Flexibility. It is flexible in nature. Why it is flexible in nature? The, the salesman can understand the needs. He can first ask and 
I understand the needs of the customers and accordingly we can increase the uh, introduce the profit. So it is flexible in nature and another one is direct feedback. Through personal selling, personal seller will get direct feedback, immediate feedback. That means when he says something about the product, the objection of the customer or the doubts against the, uh, about the products by the customer, everything will be communicated immediately back to the seller or the salesman. So direct feedback is another important thing and the third one is minimum wage. See here, informing, informing about the product is directly to the customers. So customers sometimes he may be ready to buy the product or the, he may have come to select a particular product. So whatever he says about the customer will not be a waste. Finally a successful salesman uh, may be able to convert even an indifferent customer also to a customer to the so it will not be a waste. Okay. So minimum waste is another important thing. So these are the things flexibility, direct feedback and minimum waste. These are the merits of personal sale. Then what are the importance? Personal selling is equally important to the businessman, to the society and to the customers also. That means it is important to three categories of people. One is to the important to the businessman, important to the customers and important to the society also. So let us see that what are the importance of personal selling to businessman. Importance to businessman. That means the market or the seller or the producer of the product. This is one of the effective promotional tools. Effective promotional tool for the market or the business. Model. Why is it is why it is effective? Because of these reasons. It is flexible in nature, it is direct, it brings direct feedback, and it, it is highly effective because it minimizes the waste. So it is an effective promotional tool and it is a flexible tool also. When it is flexible tool, the approach of the salesman can be changed according to the needs of the customers. So it is flexible in nature, that is also benefit to the business man. Then third one as we have told that minimizes the cost or minimizes the wastage. You can write minimizes the wastage. Okay. The effect of salesman rarely goes waste or rarely goes ineffective. So it minimizes the wastage. Then another important thing is can ensure Customer's attention or consumer's attention can ensure the attention of the customers because if we talk something directly to the customers, he cannot escape from that or he cannot uh, abstain from paying attention to that. So he has to attend to that because we, we are telling something directly to him or that we are telling to his face so he has to pay the attention so attention value is another important thing ok customer attention or attention value is there then another one is lasting relationship lasting relationship see because of the effectiveness of 
effectiveness of the seller or the salesman or because of the what the uh, talkativeness of the salesman if he is able to sell a product along with the sale of the product a relationship develops that customer if the salesman is good customer will keep on coming to that shop and buy the product whenever he needs isn't it so along with the sale of a particular product if the salesman is good a relationship develops okay so another important thing is personal rapport what is personal rapport personal relationship that means always there develops a relation between salesman and the uh, customer that is uh if we will be normally going to a particular shop regularly if we give uh, some good services from them. isn't it if you think about the nearby shops in your locality for buying a product you will be regularly going to that particular shop only why because the dealing of the uh, salesman is good so now normally we develop some relation at least if you last touch how do you have your uh, dinner or lunch or breakfast like that something he will ask i have had the tea something like that he will ask regularly or some like that some social communication develops and that develops personal rapport okay we will not give the we will not give a chance to the sellers to ask that have you had your dinner isn't it have you had your breakfast or lunch like that he may ask isn't it so like that with that social communication communication because of the social contact that develops some relationship among the customers and the uh, sales team then another important thing is that it has its own role in introduction stage role in introduction stage role in introduction stage salesmanship or personal selling has its own role in introduction stage that's what we have told that because of the developed personal relationship a salesman can easily introduce a new product because customer uh, know that salesman will not cheat him so salesman by satisfying himself that the product is good he can introduce a new product to the customers so uh, that is another important thing it has its own role person selling has its own role in introducing a new product and another important thing you can say that it has link with the customers that means business man can develop a link with the customers that link is the sales man sales man act as the link between the business man and the customers that means this business man it a sales man act as a link by because sales man informs the customers about new product produced and marketed by the business man that is one thing and another one is that he can communicate to business man about the problems or suggestions given by the customers to the business man so in between he can act as a mediator so these are all the importance of sales man ship to the uh, business man. okay importance of personal selling to the business importance of personal selling to customers what are the importance of personal selling to the customers what are the benefit of personal selling to the customers first one is that it helps to identify the needs it helps to identify the needs that means personal selling 
or sometimes the salesman recognize or tries to recognize us that what is our need, which product is needed for me to satisfy the need. So that will be informed by the salesman or salesman helps us to identify that which product is needed for us to satisfy uh, our demands or our interest. So that will be a help, a great help that is given by the salesman. And another one is that it gives latest market information. Latest market information. Salesman gives latest market information. So what is the latest product given in the market? Or which is the latest product which can satisfy all our needs? In the market that will be informed by the sales time to the customers. So that is another benefit. And next we can say that expert advice. Since an experienced man who is dealing with the same variety of products continuously, he will be able to advise us that which product is better or which brand is better and which product can effectively and helpful for you to uh, satisfy your wants. So all those things can be informed by the salesman. So he is an expert advisor. And another important thing is he induces the customers. Induces the customers. He helps the customers to select the products and buy it. So when we are sometimes the sales, the seller, sorry, the customers will be doubtful that whether I need to buy this product or need to buy this product or that product. So those confusion will be avoided or the salesman helps us to avoid all those confusion and can select and select a particular product. So that is another important thing. He helps us or induces us to buy the product. Then which are the importance of personal selling to society? Importance to society. What are the importance of personal selling to society? First, first year, we can say that first we can say that it converts the latest demand. Converts the latest demand. Converts the latest demand. We have told that induces the customers to buy the product. Induces the customers to buy the product. So customers will induce the customers to buy the product thereby convert to the latest demand. That's what we have told that a, an efficient salesman can convert even indifferent customer also to be a customer or a doubtful customer also to be a customer. Isn't it? He will be able to convert an indifferent customer to buy the product. So like that, he can convert the latest demand. That means he can induce more and more people to buy the product. Another important thing is, it creates personal sense. Selling creates employment opportunities. Creates employment opportunities. That means this is a developing profession. So it's it's a newly developed profession that nowadays many of people are attracted towards the field, field of salesmanship and the many people are coming to find job in personal sales. So it creates employment opportunities and through that they can build the career. Career development. Career development is another important thing. That means they can build a career in that. That means I think 
a person who is interested in this field can be selected the job as a salesman and later on he can be promoted to sales manager then can be become a marketing manager like that he can build his own career or career career opportunities is another important thing okay then he it helps to mobilize the sales people mobilizing sales people That is another advantage for the society. What is advantage of mobilizing the sales people? Mobilizing means movement of the sales man or sales people from one place to another. That promotes transportation, then tourism and all. Nowadays, even the sales people are traveling not only from one place to another of the same country, they may are transporting from one country to another country also. So that develops that much transportation facilities and that that creates an opportunity in tourism also tourism details. Then another important thing is product standardization. Product standardization. So we have told that a salesman normally develops a relationship with his regular customers. So he never introduces an inferior product. Isn't it? So in order to motivate the salesman to introduce a new product, the marketers or the producers will be forced to produce standardized products. So it will help to make available a standardized Products, standardized products in the society. That is another important importance of personal selling to the society. Okay. Then let us discuss another important promotion tool. That is sales promotion. Sales promotion. What is sales promotion? Say sales promotion is another important tool of promotion. Sales promotion is the activities which are undertaken to develop an immediate demand of goods. Or this is a this is all the activities which are undertaken to motivate the customers for an immediate purchase. For example, by going to or by traveling. You may be seeing that by the side of the or outside the shop, it is written that twenty percent discount for all the products. That motivates you to just uh, go inside and see that which are the products available. Or seeing that an advertisement that quantity addition or some product is attached, combination of the product. Suppose buying, uh, if you want to buy a particular product, that means you want to buy tea. So when you go and see the shop, it is given that along with the two two fifty gram of tea tea, a glass is free. So a product combination is there that motivates you to buy buy that product itself. So such a type of activities. Which are undertaken to have an immediate purchase of the products is called sales promotion. Sales promotion. Which are the merits of this sales promotion? Merits. First one is attention value. That is important to think that sales promotion attracts the customers. Has a value to attract the customers towards the products. Another one is that it is useful in new product launch. Useful in new products launch. While introducing a new product, it can be introduced. 
as an addi additional product to an existing product or along with this product and another product can be attached so that this product also can be moved better. Nowadays you have, may have seen that Colgate company launched their new Ayurvedic paste along with the, their brush. So if you buy a Colgate brush you will get a 50 gram of Ayurvedic toothpaste. That is one of the method of launching a new product. So it is useful in new product launch. And another one is that synergy in total promotion. It acts as a synergy in total promotional tool. It acts as a synergy or what is the synergy? It gives an extra energy for all other promotional tools. We have seen about advertisements and personal selling. So it gives an extra energy to for advertisement. We are seeing advertisement of many, many products and along with it says that uh, if you buy tea you will get a glass for this particular tea. So that will be an added advantage. So it gives an extra energy. It, it gives an extra energy to other promotional tools like advertisement and personal selling. So these are what the merits. Then whether it has any limitations? Yes, of course. Which are the limitations also? Demerits. Which are the demerits of sales promotion? One is it reflects crisis. It reflects crisis. What it means? Sometimes you see that 20% rebate of on Kadi products. So even though we may not go and buy the product sometimes, by it means that their that product is not having that much quality or they have to sell away the old stock. Isn't it? So it reflects crisis of the business. That means that they want to they are not getting sometimes products will be sold at a high discount. So if you give discount or if you announce discount, then also sometimes customers may hesitate to buy the product. But they will feel they may feel that it may be an inferior goods. So they have no demand. In order to increase the demand, they are selling the product at a discount. So if we get a quantity addition or product addition. Addition product along with that, that gives you may give an impression that that product which is giving an extra to the another product has no demand. That's why give. Sometimes you may have seen that in the market, three socks at the price of two socks. So immediately that comes in our mind that the product has no demand. Those soap has no demand. That's why they are giving three soap in the name in the price of Okay, so it reflects prices and thereby it spoils the image of the product. Spoils image or image of the brand. See, if we get three products in the price of two products, we will feel that the product is not not good or is substandard has no demand. So all such thoughts comes in the mind of the customers spoils the image of the product or image of the brand. So these are the main, main two limitations of sales promotion. Then let us discuss what are the commonly used sales promotion tools. Promotion tools which are the sales promotion tools, commonly used tools. There are many rebates. Rebates. That means selling a product at a special price. That is called rebate. Sometimes you may have seen the advertisement that there is 10,000 rebates for a car or an automobile unit. 
So offering a product at a special price is called rebate. Then another one is discount. Discount. Providing a certain percentage of reduction in the selling price of the goods is called discount. Sometimes when you purchase products beyond a certain amount, you may get 10% or 20% reduction or decrease. Okay, so rebate may be given for decreasing the inventory or stock or stock clearance. Discount may be given for increasing the sales. Okay, then another important thing is refund. Refund. Refund is the refund of the money given by the customers. Suppose sometimes you may have uh, seen the advertisement that if you return the wrapper of the product, you will get 5 rupees back or 10 rupees back. So, like that, it is re refund. Or sometimes it will be attached with a certain coupon. If you give back the coupon to the seller, you will get refund. Okay. Then another one is product combination. Product combination. That means an addition of another product. That's what we have to order by buying tea. You are getting a glass or a tumbler. Isn't it? By for buying some baby food, you are getting an extra tumbler. Okay, or um, at the time of buying a toothpaste, you are getting a toothbrush extra. So that, that is called the product combination. Another one is quantity gift. Quantity gift or quantity addition. It is very common that sometimes when you purchase the product, you may give that 10% extra or 20% extra or 10 gram or 25 gram extra. That is called the quantity gift. Another one is instant extra and assigned gift. Instant draw and assign gift. This you can see at the time uh, in uh, shops where there is heavy traffic of customers. So, in a particular day, those who are coming, the customers, those who are coming, their name will be put for a draw of the mother and a particular name will be selected for them, certain gift will be given. That is called instant draws and sign gift. And another one is lucky draw. Lucky draw. This is also almost similar to the later one. The thing is that here, you may have seen that scratch and win offer. So sometimes you want the product, it will be some area will be there where you scratch and inside that what is written that will be given to you. That is lucky draw. And another one is usable benefits. Usable benefits. Along with the, at the time of purchasing the product, you will be getting some uh, benefits like the, some holiday package or travel vouchers will be given, or purchasing voucher will be given, or offering free lunch or dinner in a famous hotel. So, all those things are some usable benefits a customer may get. Another one is full finance. At zero percent, zero percent. What is full finance at zero percent? Actually, it is full finance at zero percent interest. That means even if you don't have money now, you can buy the product, and the money can be given in installment. For that, you need not pay any interest. So this is also another offer. This is almost government is. But uh, stopping or 
government is not giving or not allowed to sell the product like this because there is a chance of cheating also anyway that money interest rate will be normally added to that product cost so sometimes it will be given that if you are able to pay the installment in 24 or 12 installments you need not pay any interest but at the same time it may hidden be added to the price of the product ok then another thing is sampling 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 the product ok what is this sampling so in sampling by buying the product or in order to buy the product you will get a sample and if you are satisfied with the sample you will get you can buy the product after satisfying the product sometimes you may be seeing that local medicine sellers in the uh, village they will be coming with some samples and that will be given for you to test and if you are satisfied with that you can buy that and next one is context some context will be there that means it, it may be there in front of some malls or supermarkets there those who are coming customers and that particular moment can engage for some contest or competitions the winners will be given prizes so these are all the various sales promotion tools normally used now we have to discuss so this is clear to all yes now we have to discuss two important terms only the concept of the term we can say that one is publicity publicity so all the three Elements of sales promotion techniques are over. Promotion techniques are over. Say advertisement we have told, then personal selling and sales promotion. Now another important that frequently used, commonly used method is the publicity. What is publicity? This is also like advertisement only, but there are certain differences. Most important difference is that it is unpaid form, unpaid form of personal presentation of information. See, advertisement it is paid form of non-personal presentation. Here it is, here also presentation of information only, but it is unpaid form, not paying, but not telecasting or not conveying the information by paying the money, but without paying. Normally. Uh, you may have seen that some news about the business. If we gave some good news about our business in news channel or television channels, that is a part of publicity. This is this goes as a news, so no need of giving any money. Automatically, it will that news will help us to market our product. So that is what is called publicity. That is this non-payment or Personal, non paid form of presentation, non paid form of personal presentation of information. And another one is public relations. Public relations. What is public relations? These are group of activities or set of activities undertaken by the business organization in order to increase the image. With their view to increase the image of the organization, the group of activities will be undertaken. Those activities are called as public relations. It has various public relations measures are there. For example, media creation, that means maintaining a good image with media. Then, uh, government official relation with the government officials or political leaders. Then uh, maintaining good relation with the public. For example, uh, at the time when there is an award function, some business organization will come forward to sponsor that award function. When, during that time, that award function, their name also will be shown there. So it, it gives an image of the business. Or at the time when there is a conference or something, 
some business organization will sponsor bringing water bottles, something or chairs or something like that. So that in those four water bottles or chairs, their name, the business organization's name will be printed. So all those things will uh, motivate for making a good image. So all the image building activities undertaken by the business organization. And that helps to promote their business activities are called public relations. So today mainly we have discussed what is sales, what is promotion and uh, promotion mix, various tools of promotion mix and at last these two terms publicity and public relations. And that is the end of today's class. Thank you very much.